them to answer that. And that's all you need to do. When they can't answer that, then they, then you're not obligated to pay property taxes. And if they try to still come after you, then you sue them. And you go into court as the plaintiff, suing the county who never replied to your query into where they're getting their authority to tax you because you owe your property without limitation or condition. So where's the condition? Where's the contract? What are you trying to enforce against me? And they have nothing. It's all bullshit. So you state where you're coming from and leave it to them to try to rebut your claim, and they never can. So you write to the township attorney or the Who, county. Whoever is trying to send you a tax bill. Okay, that's the township. But but the county gets gets um, a percentage of that. Probably. Yeah, they do. Yep, which is, so what, uh, what, which, which is what motivates them to collect off you. So you want to demotivate them from collecting off you, which is issuing them fines. If you continue to try to collect on, on obligations that I don't owe and you can't prove I owe, I'm going to fine you. And that's starting to get offensive with them, right? And it's no longer defensive battles. We're now looking at offensive battles where we want to cost the state if they try to mess with our rights. Did, did you did I hear you correctly? Um, you said you've done this. So I I, I sh yeah I shut them down for bylaw violations by asking them by sending one simple little letter to 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 the to the jurisdiction where they were trying to enforce uh, bylaws against one of my properties here, and I said that's exactly what I said to them. I said it's to my, to the best of my belief and knowledge and understanding, I own this property fee simple, or Dean Clifford all caps owes it owns it fee simple. Because you got to remember, the the all capital letter name is a, is a trust. It's a it's an estate. It has all the rights and privileges uh, to own property, sell property, sue and be sued that that a man does. Mm -hmm. So you're contacting now from a position authority of authority within that trust, and you're saying, no, 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 this estate owns that property. Fee simple, absolute. Are you claiming otherwise? And give them the definition that's in Black's Law Dictionary. Write it right out for them and say, this is the definition in Black's Law Dictionary. How could you charge me taxes on something I own without condition? Because taxes are a condition. I'm not sure I understand condition. A condition, well, uh, like a conditional sale. Like, I'll sell you my truck on the condition you pay me $5,000. That's a oh. condition. You don't get the truck until I get the $5,000. So how does that condition apply to property tax? I'm not sure. They're trying to tell you you own the property on the condition that you continue to pay property taxes. Otherwise, they'll take it from you. Oh, won't they? okay. I got gotcha. you. That's a condition. How can there be a condition on something I own fee simple absolute? Because by definition, it's conditionless. Okay. I understand that. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. So you, how much time do you give them to answer? Ten days. And then you go straight to court? No, and then you default them. So you didn't Fine reply. Enough. You agree with me that I owe it. Fee simple, absolute. Send them another letter saying yep. that you agree with me. Yep, thank you for agreeing with me. Okay. Yeah, thank them for it. Great, thank you. Thank you for agreeing with me that I own the property. Fee simple, absolute, because you didn't dispute it. So then you just go to court? They don't even have to appear, do they? No, well, that's if you're going to sue them. If they're trying to take you to court to collect the taxes... Um, and they're going to take you to, uh, they're not going to take you to, to, to civil court. They're going to try to take you to criminal court because they have no case. They have no standing, so they don't go to civil court. They go to criminal court where a contract is presumed. And I think that's in my videos if you watch them where we talk about how criminal court is they're enforcing a presumed or already presumed contract where you've already violated the term of a contract. They don't want to talk about the fact that there's no contract. They go right around that. What so if they, they, there's um, um, certificates of tax sale against the property? Tax sale? Well, yeah, then, then you want to sue them to, to stop that. I know that the, uh, a pending litigation order will stop a tax sale. That's called, and we, what you have to do is you have to apply in civil court. You have to file a lawsuit against the county. And then you have to make application for a pending litigation order and then send that down to the county or whoever where your property is registered to halt the tax sale, saying, no, 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 this is pending litigation. I'm suing these people because I don't owe that money. And that will halt the tax sale immediately. 
You mean the foreclosure on the tax sale? It'll say that a pending litigation order will halt anything, tax sale, mortgage foreclosure, anything, because the matter is pending litigation. Okay. Now, what if um, the land is in a a real corporation, you know, a name other than a human name? The, 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 the land, you mean? Yeah, no, I, I, we have a piece of um, industrial property. Okay, now it's being held by like a like a, a numbered corporation or some kind of a corporation or a company name. Yes. The same, um, the same but thing I have an, I have an unrecorded deed in my name. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you guys have different terminology down there. Um, mm. in, in anything that's being held in, in a corporate name, the same rules apply because. Um, when you go down and you register a corporation, you, you are the director of the corporation. Your signature created it. It's just publicly recorded with the state. That doesn't mean the corporation has to abide by statutes and regulations at all. It just means... Really? No, of course not. Of course not. Absolutely not. That's, that's actually, that, was, that story is in my, my videos there about why, how I was able to finally break all this down because I had to go to court to defend one of my corporations that owned a chunk of property. And that's when I realized that the president and CEO of a corporation has all the power and he can say no 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 those statutes and regulations don't apply to my corporation so then in that case i would be this ceo and president of course sending the letter right who, who is uh, what, what is the title of uh, of obama commander in chief president ceo of the corporation united states of america right he is the mm -hmm. top dog does anybody tell him what to do no no because he's the president and CEO of that corporation. If you're the president, and you are the president and CEO of your corporation, because it's your corporation, you appointed yourself to that position. Well, this corporation um, was a subchapter S. My mom, my dad, and myself were um, the you know the owners paying the tax. The taxes passed through to the um, the p individual people. Not, the corporation doesn't pay. My mom and dad died. Okay. So I'm the only one left here. Okay. So does that, I mean, even though I wasn't uh, appointed uh, president, I'm the only one left. If you're the only one left, then you're the, you're, the, you're, the, you're the one left in the position of authority. Okay. Yeah, right. If you're the equity holder, you, you appoint. You, you make the rules. You are the law. Equity is king. Equity, equity, equity. Okay. Are you familiar with the court of equity? Court of equity. Court of equity? Well, mm -hmm. any civil court is a court of equity. That's actually that's all court is, period. Every court is a court of equity. There's nothing well, else. They don't but they don't operate as a court of equity. Absolutely they do. Every court operates as a court of equity. There's nothing else being heard in courts, in fact. Because everything is commerce, that's all commerce is, is equity. That's it. Every court's a court of equity. That's why contract law is so important. The only way to establish equity is to establish the contract. But equity, I, I understand, it doesn't go by statute. They go by maxims of law. There you go. Exactly. You just answered your own question. So that, how do you think we're rendering statutes uh, void when we go into court? Oh, because that, it's equity? It's, it's all equity. They're trying, they're trying to say that you, you've entered into a contract with the state uh, to obey those statutes. And you're saying, no, I haven't, because the contractor, and, and they're coming after fines and fees and levies, aren't they? That's all, that's all money. It's all equity. Everything's equity. Interesting. We've got people teaching otherwise. Yeah, well, that's... That you've uh, got this invoke a special court of equity. Yeah, man-made law is equity, period. If it's, uh, so if it's not man-made law, there's only one other law that exists. So okay. contract, contract and equity. People have to keep it to that argument, plain and simple. Okay. Can I just Angela? Yes. How does this, um, what Danny's teaching, I haven't listened to all of the tapes. How does this stand with the executor letter, in your opinion? Oh, I don't know. I don't think, I don't, I don't have any faith in the executor letter. The, 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 look the, the at the source correct. of the executor letter. It's incomplete. It's only a step. It's not a silver bullet. Have you seen it? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's only a step. But it's basically the same concept. 
It's the it's the same concept. I mean, the, the, the concept of the executor. Yeah, the problem I'm is... really is, bit innocent because it, the executor letter, the one, if you're talking about the one David Clarence did, yep. you never really claim your position. You claim the office of the executor, yep. but you never, you know, start, well, it's different. It's not the same thing. Okay. I don't like it, but that's Because me. people were going into court and where they weren't getting uh, remedy. No. I mean, no. I know Ronnie, Ronnie got, got remedy. Yeah, a lot of t- a lot of people have tried that up here in Canada as well, and uh, I know I remember uh, one of the, one of the cases that somebody walked in with the executor letter, and the and the ju- and the guy said, "I'm here, I'm the executor," and the guy said, "Why did did so and so die?" Yeah, or who appointed you? Yeah, is that why you're using the word administrator instead that, of executor? Yeah, because because administrator comes from administrative law, and administrative law is the biggest branch of law there is. Period. And okay, administrator, you're gonna. This is in the videos, right? Uh, yeah, I, I think we touched on that in the videos. I don't know if I'd even gotten around to that in, in the videos yet. I was still dealing with basic stuff. But uh, oh. yeah, it all, it all comes down to administrative law and contracts. And only the administrator can contract, right? Can uh, can a guy working on an assembly line at Coca-Cola contract uh, enter into enter Coca-Cola into a contract with somebody else? No. No. Only the admi- only the administrative staff of Coca-Cola can do certain things, right? Only administrators can administrate. If you're an employee, you can't. If you're a stockholder, you can't. If you're an administrator, you are the one who runs the corporation or the trust or the estate, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. You want to be the administrator. You want to be the guy administrating and giving direction. And if you want to call that a will for an estate, because that's all a will for an estate is, it's the will of the estate. How is the estate going to be operated and run? I don't care what you want to call it. That's what it is. Okay, we're going to okay. move on. Is that good well, thank for you? you so much. <laughs> That's thank all right. You. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully you can disseminate that a bit. Yeah. Yeah, watch the videos. They're so good. <laughs> I'm, like I said, I'm on my third round. I like getting it really planted firmly in my brain. I like it to just roll off my tongue. <laughs> well, you know, you know what it is, and people don't understand this, is uh, if, if you have to think about the stuff that we're talking about consciously, um, that's it slows your thinking down, right? When you know this stuff so well that it's part of your subconscious, that's that's when you know people know understand what's going on because their subconscious now knows what's going on, and they're able to just rattle this stuff off without even thinking about it. Because that's what your subconscious do. Ninety-five percent of your life, everything you do, ninety-five percent of your functions of your body, are controlled by your subconscious. Five percent is controlled by your conscious mind. And that's why judges know that when you have to sit and think about something in court to come up with an answer, they know that you don't know well enough that it's part of your subconscious. And that's all the psychological training they do when they become a judge. So people have to, so so good on you, Angela. Watch this stuff over and over and over again. And when you're driving around, think about this stuff and make it so ingrained in your being that it's, it's part of your subconscious now. You can answer without even thinking about it. I have one of those aha moments watching them videos. But anyway, let's move on. We got still a lot of people here. Yeah, that that, that was my rant. We'll go on to a question now. <laughs> Do you need a drink of water or anything? No, I still got my okay? water bottle here. Oh. Okay. Uh Quad five two one oh eight. Did you have a question for Dean Clifford? Yes, yes. Um I was wanting to um uh, talk in regards to uh, possibly, I, I guess, with the foreclosure process. Okay. Um, I wanted to find out, is it possible to possibly, um, I guess, maybe file a lawsuit in regards to mail fraud since if they're committing, uh, I guess, fraud, um, I guess, with not actually owning the notes or not actually loaning any money, but they're trying to collect and they're actually sending, uh, I guess, um, statements or bills through the mail, isn't that some type of mail fraud? Of course it is. Of course it is. Using, okay. using, the, using the postal system to try to collect on a non-existent debt is, right. by definition, mail fraud. Absolutely. And if they can, if they can sue you in court mm-hmm. trying to collect on a fake debt, then why mm-hmm. would you not be able to sue them in court for mail fraud? Okay. It wouldn't, and I'm not, I'm just kind of, Reading, reading up on mail fraud and stuff of that nature, but wouldn't it be uh, accounts for each statement that they've actually mailed out to you? 
if you want it to be, if you contact them in advance. This is where I, I talk in the videos about contacting people and giving notice. So if they okay. keep send, sending you these notices saying you got to pay this debt, you got.